Welcome back to First Fruits Design Co. where today we will be building a floor level bed frame. Our friend asked us to help him build it for his toddler's twin mattress. He told us how we got a great deal on some construction lumber at a special midnight sale between 2 and 3 a.m. and also said it was very important that his face wasn't shown in the video. Honestly, now that I say it out loud, I think maybe my friend is a crook. So we're not gonna use his real name. Anyway, we started by writing a cut list. If you're interested in making this yourself and you're not a crook, the materials will cost you just shy of $100. You could even lower that cost more by replacing the dowels with 2x2s. We rip all the 2x4s down before cutting them to length. We make sure to rip our 2x2s and 2x3s first because some of those will be cut to the same length as our 2x4s. This is important because we use a stop block to ensure our pieces are exactly the same length. Because some of our material will have sharp edges, we need to put a round over on all the exposed edges at the router table. Bear in mind that this bed frame is being made for Mike's child, so let's make it as toddler friendly as we can. We needed to drill 3 8 inch deep holes in the top and bottom rails for the dowels. To accomplish this, we used a Forstner bit in the drill press. If you don't have a drill press, it's not a big deal. You can just use a drill. But while I began drilling the holes, Jeff got started on sanding. We will be attaching the rails and vertical pieces using pocket holes. And speaking of pocket holes, if this video has been helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. We really do appreciate all of your support. And if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to check out our other instructional build videos on our YouTube channel. In addition to our YouTube channel, we also have our website at firstfruitsdesignco.com where you can find curated home goods made by us. You can also grab some First Fruits merch and sign up for our email list. With all of our pieces cut, drilled, and shaped, we touch up any rough spots and then get to assembling. Carl's bed frame would be really hard to sand in the tight spots after assembly. When joining material with pocket holes, it can be a little tricky, so here's a couple of tips that we use. We make sure to jog fasteners into the material with the drill. This helps the fastener to get a good initial bite into the material at the point where it's properly aligned. Just after this point is usually where the second piece is going to push away from the first piece. This happens if the two pieces are not totally clamped down to your work surface or each other. To correct this, Slowly reverse the fastener until the material is realigned properly and then jog it back in until the joint is solid. There are few things in this world more annoying than a dowel rod that spins in furniture. Chad agreed and put plenty of glue in the holes before the dowels went in. A really cool thing about this build is that it is easily done in a day. Also, we would love to hear from you. If you bought this or were building it, how would you finish it? Stain, natural sealer like tongue oil, uh, maybe paint it. Leave a comment down below and let us know. If you're interested in building this, please, we encourage you, dive in. This project went together so smoothly that even the tools on the workbench began to jump for joy. Using the three quarter inch dowels gave it a really, really nice look. It costs about twice as much as using two by twos, but totally worth it in the end. So now we're wrapping up and assembling the four walls independently, and then we'll begin to attach them all together. If you can clamp up the pieces you're joining with pocket holes like this, you shouldn't have any problems with alignment. Make sure you're putting glue on all your joints. The pocket holes should be strong enough and there's no need to worry about like seasonal wood movement, but over time the joint can loosen and squeak, so the glue helps to prevent that. Here's a quick shot of the fasteners we're using and another bonus pro tip. This is the most comfortable way to hold a drill or driver. In order to put on the top trim pieces, we move the assembled frame to the floor. Now we can measure so that the trim has a 3 8 inch reveal all around. We made the trim piece on the back flush since it will go up against the wall and the sides and the front will have that reveal. 
The dimensions in the cut list at the beginning of this video will reflect that. We clamped them down and then drove countersunk screws from underneath. The trim just really completed the look and gave a little more stability. And just like that, the bed frame is done and we are ready to load it into Jason's truck. So Heather grabbed the heavy side of the bed frame, we carried it outside, and we got it loaded to go and get painted. We did a little celebration and then we realized we wanted more shots of it assembled and we just took it back out of the truck. So this is what it will look like if your toddler sleeps in the driveway, but this, this is what it should look like in a home. Enjoy these beauty shots and then go watch this next video.